I am here with Mark Swain, the president of TMI, and I wanted to come back out to Virginia for a couple reasons, but the primary was to interview you. After I was here the last time, you made an impression on me in terms of how you have a passion for cars and how it's evolved into kind of a massive business. This is your life now. So to start off, I'm gonna ask you a few questions. Okay. When you were a kid, did you know that you loved cars? Did you know that you loved driving? What was your first experience with that? Yeah, absolutely. I knew uh, I loved cars. I knew I loved speed. Uh, I was the kid who built the bigger bike ramp to jump my BMX bike and always getting hurt. So I knew that my life was going to have to have some adrenaline rush into it. Um, now, I did have uh, some good support that uh, my family was actively involved in amateur motorsport growing up. So uh, my dad raced but also as a family, they were involved in the organization of it. So we were at tracks or parking lots for those familiar with, with racing. Uh, it was called Solo 2 at the time okay. or autocross. So we were somewhere all the time. So I brought the family together, but I knew that cars were pretty cool and that uh, I wanted to get behind the wheel. And were you, uh, this was in Canada? Did you, did you race in the US and in Canada or did you go all over the world or? Uh, I did a little bit of racing in the US. Most of my racing was in Canada. Um, so you know, did the, the standard thing, karting, um, through the solo ranks with CASC, road racing in Canada, ice racing in Canada, so um, a, a bit of everything, but uh, you know, I just really enjoyed um, the community that it, it had. So, you know, family friends for years and years came from motorsport, so it was really a, a good experience. Okay, interesting. So you, that was a kid, and then how old were you kind of when this was going on? Was this his childhood or? Yeah, I, I was at the racetrack probably before I was born, um, and so I, I just uh, grew up into it. Um, I started karting late, um, but uh, really my parents made me buy my first go-kart, so, uh, so I started a lawn cutting business and uh, cut grass and uh, got a small loan from my grandma to buy a riding lawnmower, mm -hmm. and then had other kids in the neighborhood cutting grass for me and then bought a go-kart. So I didn't start go-karting until a little bit later, uh, I think I was probably about uh, 14 or, or 15 when I did that, but uh, then after that it was uh, completely behind the wheel, but uh, it, it's always been there. It's always been a passion. Okay. Now, I've talked to a lot of people recently about racing and driving and modern cars, and there seems to be this kind of disconnect, at least in the U.S., about karting. It seems like a lot of people, it's not as big of a deal in the U.S. as it is in like Europe, and you got into it late. Uh, so I'm curious to know, did that kind of transform the way you thought about driving, getting into karting? Would you recommend that for other people that want to learn how to drive? Yeah, karting was great. Um, so I actually, before I officially raced go-karts, there was a local track, uh, if people are familiar in, in Canada, it was called Family Cartways, and it was just down the road. And they were rental carts at the time, but as a small child, uh, I don't know, seven, eight, nine years old, to go there and get the tickets and do the laps was unbelievable. And I remember there's a separate track that had the racing carts where guys actually brought their own carts. And I just remember thinking, wow, I wanted to be over there. So you'd go in the pro shop and I would drool over the carts that were there um, thinking that's where I wanted to be. But when you get into a cart, it's pure, you know, and it really separates. It really makes you be a better driver. Uh, I raced four stroke go-karts. Uh, we had Honda engines on it in the U.S. They use a lot of brakes, but um, you had to be smooth. You had to roll through the corner. So it really teaches you to be a good driver. Okay. So this is 14. Now, what happens in your like late teenage years, like 16, 17, the dangerous years? Did you get into cars and how did you get into all that? Absolutely. I had a Honda Civic uh, built up. It was my daily driver built into a road race car. I ran a class called GTE um, in CASC Ontario Sprints when I was 16. Um, and uh, so that was the start there. So the second I could get behind the wheel of a car, I did, and I think I actually made my mom happy that I did that because she wasn't uh, a fan of the carts with open wheels, but she grew to understand that uh, it was just part of it and it wasn't going to stop me, but she was happy I switched to cars. So started racing Honda Civics and then just uh, onwards. So now that you're, you have a Civic, you're now you're racing real cars, you're doing all that. In terms of your long-term thoughts, did you want to be a race car driver? What were you thinking at that age? What did you want to do? Yeah, I wanted to be a race car driver, absolutely. So I, I love sports cars, um, so that's what I thought I was going to do. Okay. So there's a big gap, though, from the want to the, how it really works. Um, so as I got older, uh, finishing high school, looking what to do in college, I went to school for uh, business and marketing and really focused on 
um, getting those sponsors, getting those partners on board so that I could actually afford to go racing. So that was a big part of how I did some of the more um, pro series that we ran was with proper sponsors on board, understanding that it's not just a sticker on the car, that it's a true partnership and we're there to sell a product. So um, going to school with the focus of that, uh, did it for a little while and uh, I, I guess I, I look back on it fondly. It was a lot of fun. Did you, real, did you wake up one day and realize that this is not going to work, like that you weren't going to be a race car driver and that you uh, had to transition or did it, did it evolve as you did it, you learned? Yeah, it, it evolves because you're always evolving as people. So it evolved that um, the, one of the teams I was driving for was actually one of my early partners here at TM Autotech. So, you know, started to, to race more and then realized that, hey, we can start a business. And then you start into a business and realize, wow, there's a lot of adrenaline rush. There's a lot of uh, competitive nature in business. So that really picked up the, the, the hole. You know, I guess if I didn't have a business, I would be looking for something to fill that adrenaline rush. Okay. Oh, which is why you transitioned into this, which kind of not, brings us to here and now. When you started TMI, was it totally different than where it is now? Um, I don't want to say it's totally different. When you're in it every day, you sometimes you don't see the change. There's a lot of people like yourself who come in once a year or every couple of years and they say, wow, look at this. It's, it's yeah. changed a lot. But when you're in it, no, it's kind of going along the, the path. And sometimes you feel like it's taking longer to get to where you want to go or things like that. But uh, for the most part, it, it's been on the, the proper upwards trend. Uh, we just cleared 10 years uh, being in business. So that was a nice milestone to hit That's great. and uh, just continue on. So. One of the final couple questions is, you know, you've gone through all this and it seems like, you know, when you paint a picture in retrospect, it seems like it's just kind of smoothly flowed into where you're <laughs> at now. Um, obviously there's bumps along the way. What have you learned getting here now that you can maybe help other people that want to get into the automotive industry? Like if we were talking about this earlier, you're stuck at a desk job like I was for a long time, wishing you'd wake up and not have to go to work. And obviously you have challenges here, but how do you make this a career? What, what did you do to get to this point that you can help other people out with? I guess it just starts by putting everything you've got into your passion. So it started out that the people I met early in life uh, when I was racing with, I, I was all in when I was racing, that was it. And then you really just build relationships. So I think that um, some of the relationships I have now in business, I, I met those people in my childhood. So never take for granted somebody's relationship the, um, and uh, it goes both ways to, to be a, a good person in general. Um, but just understand that there are going to be bumps in the road and it's not going to be perfect, but uh, something over the last few years really understood is planning. So plan out things and stick to your plan. And there'll be bumps in the road, but if you go back and you realize that you're, you're still on the plan that you set, then things will work out. So that's the biggest thing. But, you know, yeah, waking up and coming to work is not always fun, but when you realize that you're building cool products and then you get calls from customers that really enjoy the product, that makes it worthwhile. And I, I can't say that it doesn't hurt that sometimes I take a car home on the weekend and go for a drive and it just really makes you realize why you do it and it, it's a lot of fun and we're trying to add our little excitement to other people's lives. Okay, cool. And I think the last question for you, and this is kind of the, the whole tie-in of this, that is an object, right? It's a thing. You have people that built it, you put a lot of energy into it, you know, you have the connection with the UK. How much of this is really about the car versus the people? You know, you talked about that, it, you know, you go back to childhood and it's kind of about those connections you make and that seems very important to you. How much of it really is about the people versus the thing? The, the people are the thing, really, when it gets down to it and that's what you realize as you try and build a, a company versus just a product. So it's the framework, it's getting a framework together and understanding where people fit into that framework. And changes do happen and you might have to move them around, but it's the people that really make something like this happen. So yes, it's an object at the end, end of the day, but we're working on it every day as a team and uh, you're, you're building those relationships each day. All right. Well, a big thanks to Mark for taking the time to do this uh, interview. It's really about the joy of driving and how it really connects. The whole thing of this car connects people together. And the more you, obviously in business, the more people you meet, the more you realize that's one of the things that keeps it going, you know? <laughs> so it's... Yeah, no, you got to build something that people want, but it, it is really gratifying when somebody phones up and says, hey, I just want to tell you that I'm really enjoying my car. And I'm not sure 
how many people in business can say that, that they have people, unsolicited phone bag and say, hey, I just want to let you know I had a good drive on the weekend, enjoyed the car. So that, that makes it all worthwhile. Cool. Good. Thanks again. I appreciate it, man. All right. I'll, appreciate it. Thanks. I'll talk to you soon. This savage geese, I hate him. I hate him. I'm going to show you how to get back at him on Yelp and all that other stuff. <laughs>